Hey, how's it going guys? Chris here, with another one of those Battlefield 1 weapon guides. And today I'm going to be giving you the complete lowdown on the Burton LMR for the support class. A pretty fast firing gun, capable of shooting incendiary rounds, providing you with more firepower against those pesky planes buzzing around above your head. So the M1917 Winchester Burton Machine Rifle, otherwise known as the Burton LMR, was a prototype weapon designed to be used against observation balloons used on the Western Front. Despite it technically being designed as a light machine gun type weapon, the Burton LMR had quite a lot of similarities to the modern assault rifle, being a shoulder fired gun chambered to use a unique intermediate round, complete with its very own bayonet lug. So in a way, it was a bit of a mishmash between the two, hence why it became known as a light machine rifle rather than a true LMG. It had the ability to fire in both semi and fully automatic modes, due to the fact that the gun had two triggers, so pulling the normal trigger alone would only allow the Burton to fire off individual shots. But by holding the normal trigger down, along with its second trigger, sat just underneath the trigger guard, well this turned the weapon into a very deadly fully automatic rifle, shooting at rapid speeds of around 800 RPM. Now, not many rifles have ears, but this one does, as the Burton LMR had a pretty funky looking appearance, with those two top loaded 20 round box magazines sticking up from its receiver at 60 degree angles, holding either the typical infantry friendly, or should I say unfriendly ammunition designed to punch through flesh, or a new special kind of incendiary spritz around made to light up enemy air balloons and literally cause them to crash and burn. During the Great War, observation balloons littered the battlefield, giving the enemy a tactical advantage, as they were able to spot ground troops closing in on their position and direct artillery barrages on soldiers more accurately from the safety of the sky. They were often defended by anti-aircraft guns, and standard bullets just weren't really enough to cause any significant damage to bring them down to the ground. But by 1917, Winchester's Frank Burton had been developing a weapon to help combat these floating pests, and he created the Burton LMR, which was compatible with a newly made .345 WSL incendiary cartridge. The rifle would have been primarily mounted onto planes for aerial use, with enemy balloons being the main target to be fired upon, and if your plane got shot down during combat, and you happened to survive the crash somehow, well, that Burton LMR could be taken from its ring mount and used as an infantry weapon, alongside the use of conventional ammunition, because using incendiary bullets on human beings was deemed to be a pretty nasty, unethical thing to do, and was even prohibited to be used against other fighter planes whizzing around in the sky. But, you know, balloons and zeppelins were A-OK -okay to set alight, due to the customary rules of war at the time. Should the Burton be needed for infantry combat, then a special ground barrel could have been switched over to accordingly, giving the gun dual purposes with multiple ammo types to cater for the situation the wielder happens to be in. Though despite being a pretty fancy bit of kit for its time, the weapon became obsolete when it was first produced, because the forward mounted Vickers guns on planes were made compatible with incendiary ammo, which would have been much more effective than the Burton LMR for bursting those balloons. And so, only one model was ever known to be built and tested, meaning the gun never made it past its prototype stage. Anyway, if you want to unlock the Burton LMR to use as your very own, you're going to need to do a few specific challenges, though you don't need to buy any sort of DLC as the gun's available for everyone. There's two variants, with the first one being the trench, and you can get this one by performing 50 capture point defense skills, which is basically where you stand within the capture zone of a flag and take down another player. It doesn't matter if that player is outside the capture zone, it's still going to count towards the task, and do this 50 times and you'll have that trench variant in the back, nice and easy. The second variant, which is the optical, requires you to get 50 kills with the Burton LMR Trench, so you'll have to unlock that one first, along with resupplying 100 different teammates with ammo as support. This is going to take a few matches to do, as everyone you resupply will only count as one towards the assignment. The 100 resupplies all need to be performed on different teammates, so this one might take a little bit longer to complete, but just so long as you keep throwing down those ammo crates and generally being a helpful person, then you'll get this one done eventually over time. So the Burton LMR has got some really interesting stats, especially when it comes to the gun's overall power, as it's actually weaker than all of the other support weapons by a pretty large margin. The Burton's got a maximum damage of just 23, which isn't very much, and it's going to deal this sort of damage up to 25 meters. From here, it'll drop down even further over distance, eventually reaching the gun's minimum damage output of 17.5 at 37 meters and beyond, basically meaning that it'll take an extra bullet to kill than most of the other support LMGs at those longer ranges and up close in CQC though between 13 and 28 meters, the damage dealt will translate over quite nicely to a 5 bullet kill, 
taking down other players in the same number of shots as most of the other LMG type weapons. The Burton's maximum damage is actually the same as the Bene Mazis, BARs and M1917's minimum damage. In fact, most of the Assault Class's SMGs are even going to outmatch it in close range when it comes to raw power and bullets to kill. And it kind of functions in a similar way to the Automatico, but its rounds are going to be more lethal over distance, making it a deadlier option to use against enemies further away, putting it more in line with the other support weapons too. Now remember what I said earlier on about the Burton LMR being capable of firing incendiary ammo to take down observation balloons? Well, you can switch over to incendiary ammo in Battlefield 1 by using the Select Fire Toggle. And even though it was deemed to be unethical in real life, you can spray your opponents with those incendiary rounds to your heart's content, being the savage person that you are. But although it sounds pretty brutal on paper, incendiary ammo doesn't turn you into a twisted fire starter, and it actually deals less damage against infantry, with a new lower maximum damage of 18 and a minimum damage of just 14.9, increasing the bullets to kill by 1, taking up to 6 to 7 rounds to put another player down, therefore making this standard ammunition a much more effective option. Though the incendiary ammo is going to shred through those pesky planes and deal more damage to air vehicles instead, allowing you to disable wings, engines and plane parts much easier, thus giving the Burton LMR better anti-air capabilities than a lot of the other guns in the game. So the Burton's intermediate rounds might not pack as much punch as the other support weapon's heavier LMGs, but this is nicely balanced by the fact that the Burton LMR is now the fastest firing weapon that a support player can equip, beating the Parabellum MG14 with an almost 20% higher fire rate. The gun shoots at the rapid speed of 830 RPM, more than enough to put your enemies down hard and fast, and despite dealing a lower amount of damage per bullet, that speedy rate of fire is enough to crack up the gun's effectiveness and turn it into a bit of a wrecking machine, having some of the most competitive kill times of the lot. The Burton drops players quicker than almost all of the other support weapons at close to medium ranges, and it still kills reasonably fast beyond here too. But although the gun might be able to spray a load of rounds out in a very short space of time, because those bullets have less power behind them, they're not going to fly through the air as quickly as normal. The Burton LMR has got a muzzle velocity of 520 meters per second, which is an extremely low value for a support machine gun to have, actually being the same as the Ribby Rolls 1918, a gun which also fires an intermediate cartridge. And so this helps to distinguish the Burton from being a true light machine gun, with it having more properties that you'd likely see with a typical assault rifle. Which makes sense, with the Burton being classified as a light machine rifle instead of an LMG. Considering the gun fires extremely quickly, the Burton LMR handles with recoil fairly well going against the typical trend that rapid fiery weapons should kick around like crazy when they have their triggers pulled. Unlike the Parabellum MG14 that does kick around like crazy, yet fires at a slower pace, the Burton's got a vertical recoil value of 0.36, and a horizontal value of either 0.27 for its trench variant, or a tad lower still for the optical at 0.238. Both pretty respectable figures, as the trench variant's going to have a similar kind of precision to the Madsen, and the optical variant is, believe it or not, a tiny bit more accurate than both the Lewis gun's low weight and suppressive variants. It's still not exactly going to be a super accurate gun by any means, but it's definitely very manageable and shouldn't really cause you too many problems, able to make it feel usable beyond closer ranges without the need of a bipod, which the gun just doesn't have. The Burton LMR has however been given a pretty harsh first shot recoil multiplier of 2.5 times, which is more than all of the other support guns and this is to balance the recoil stats out a bit, making it slightly less effective for firing in shorter bursts. Though despite this factor, tap and burst firing is still a usually more effective way to deal with targets further away, even if it does exaggerate that first shot a little bit more, as holding down the trigger is going to cause the gun to lose accuracy quicker than the other weapons due to it firing faster, so burst firing is still a pretty good way to counter the weapon's kick nevertheless. If you offer the trench variant of the Burton LMR, in typical trench variant fashion, you'll be given less hip fire spread when you shoot, meaning you can bypass aiming down sights in CQC to fire and therefore kill your enemies quicker, giving the weapon more usability with run and gun aggressive tactics within shorter sight lines. Though the optical variant is going to have less spread whilst in ADS, and it's also got a bit less horizontal recoil too, making it a more accurate choice for aiming with that optical sight.
Although the gun's essentially got two magazines sticking out of its head, you can only really use one at a time, as the right magazine holds 20 rounds of standard ammunition, and the left one's got 20 incendiary rounds, which are both selected and used independently from one another. So technically, the Burton LMR can hold up to 40 bullets at a time, though you'll mainly be using the normal ammo to deal with your enemies in most situations, down to it being more effective. And so if you look at it that way, it means that you've got 20 rounds to blast out without interruption, which is a pretty low amount for a support weapon to have. Because you're spraying those bullets out really quickly, this also means that those 20 rounds aren't going to last very long either, so you'll typically be able to take down two or three enemies fine enough, but you'll probably struggle to kill any more, meaning the Burton's not exactly a very reliable gun for getting you out of sticky situations when you're surrounded by the enemy team. It's going to take you 3.2 seconds to replace an empty mag, and 2.8 seconds to reload with bullets still left over, which are exactly the same times as the BAR M1918, another fully automatic support weapon that just so happens to have a 20 round ammo capacity. This is pretty fast as far as support guns go, but bearing in mind that the Burton shares a lot of its characteristics with the assault weapons, being a bit of a hybrid between the two gun types, reloading the Burton LMR isn't really all that quick when compared to the likes of the assault SMGs. Running out of ammo is a pretty common thing, but you could always switch over to your incendiary rounds if you really need to, which is actually a tad quicker than reloading, but with the trade-off of dealing slightly less damage. This gives you a bit more flexibility to continue the fight with that extra magazine, though when you've used that one up, then you're going to be completely reliant on your sidearm until you reload the Burton. But just remember that the Burton fires from two independent magazines, so you'll also need to reload them both separately too, which can take a lot longer to do if they're both running dry. But anyway, in conclusion, the Burton LMR is the support answer to the Automatico, and because it's a bit of a mashup between both the assault and support weapons, being an LMR instead of an LMG, this gives it an interesting blend of properties that grant it the same sort of aggressive traits that a lot of the SMGs have, but at the same time, it still holds onto a few things to ground it into the support class, being able to perform slightly better over distance, but slightly less so in CQC when compared to the assault weapons. The Burton LMR fires quicker than the LMGs, but it deals a bit less damage to balance it out, and when it comes to kill times, that lower damage isn't really going to impact the gun's effectiveness by too much, with the Burton being a deadly killing machine that can still drop targets at insane speeds over those close to medium ranges. The fact that its recoil pattern isn't too violent makes it a much easier weapon to use on the go whilst running and gunning, allowing you to use the Burton in a more offensive way than you probably would with a few of the support's heavier, slower firing LMGs. But despite being a pretty unique gun that functions in a somewhat similar way to the BAR, that rapid fire rate combined with those small magazines is enough to put you in a bit of a pickle, as you're going to frequently run out of ammo and you'll need to play smart if you want to survive against multiple opponents, hunting down cover to reload, or switch over to your sidearm or incendiary rounds to deal with your situation. If those planes are pissing you off a bit, constantly dropping bombs all over your head, then you can switch to those incendiary rounds to fight back. But just keep in mind that, although you'll deal more damage to air vehicles, soldiers are able to soak up more of that damage, rendering the incendiary bullets a less effective thing to use against ground troops. Overall, the Burton LMR is a great option to pick for pushing forwards and engaging enemy positions. It's capable of tearing right away through both infantry and aircraft pretty well, though you've got to keep an eye on your ammo count and learn to hold yourself back from rushing into a dangerous situation if you want to stay alive. But so long as you're careful, the Burton LMR can be a brutal force to be reckoned with, letting you dominate your opponents in one-on-one -on -one gunfights and allow you to play a bit more aggressively with the support glass. So that's it for another video, guys. Hope you enjoyed the guide and found it useful. Hit that like button if you did, and subscribe for loads more Battlefield content coming soon on my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in that next episode.